the origin of cosmic rays. And you may have heard about cosmic rays. Uh, I think it may have been covered in some of the other talks, but that's what I'm going to focus on. Okay. Um, so cosmic rays, just, just to, you know, to, to give you a little bit of history, about, you know, about 200, actually a little more than 200 years ago, in about 1785, there was a scientist, Charles Coulomb, and you've probably heard about him, you know, Coulomb, he, he did a lot of experiments with electric charge, he measured, you know, he carried out uh, basically experiments in electrostatics. Uh, Charles Coulomb in 1785, he showed that if you take a charged metallic body, okay, and you, you take, and I actually have a demonstration here, which I'd like to show you, you. So you can basically take, um, and I think it's right here. You can, this is a high school experiment. This is what is called an electroscope right here. Uh, you can, uh, this is, I'm, I'm going to put electrostatic charge on this, okay? And I'm going to do that. And you can see what's happening is I'm inducing charge here. And as a result of that, this is a metal conductor right on top. The charge is being induced. Opposite charges repel each other. And now you see that the electroscope leaves have kind of repelled each other and moved away. So these were some basic experiments that Charles Coulomb did in 1785. And you, know, you can see here in this uh, portrait, um, this is a Hippolyte, I think, is the painter who did this. It's sitting in some museum in France, and you can see Charles Coulomb in, his, in this portrait here with uh, with, the, with his electroscope. But you know, you can see right there the electroscope, the leaves, the electroscope have moved apart. Um, what Charles Coulomb saw that. Eventually, uh, during the course of the stork, you can watch that, and you'll see that it's going to get slowly discharged. Okay, those those two leaves that you see here will come back together. It will basically get discharged, and that's what he saw. That he saw that metallic bodies lose charge when placed in air. So somehow these 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 uh, leaves are getting discharged. There must be some kind of radiation in the air around it to discharge it. Okay. He didn't know what it was, but he just he he recorded it, and uh, people were intrigued by it. Okay, around 1900, um, there was an experiment. There was a guy called uh, Wolf, Theodore Wolf, 1910. Uh, he he he, you know, his uh, his uh, assumption was that if you're losing charge, there must be the air around you must be ionized. Where is this coming from? Well, a natural sort of deduction is maybe it's coming from the Earth. So maybe there is uh, radiation coming from the Earth, and that's what's causing the electroscope to discharge. So he said, okay, why don't we sh why don't we prove that? So he took his electroscope, and he was in Paris, and the tallest building available to him was the Eiffel Tower. So he said, why don't we climb the Eiffel Tower, 300 meters tall? So he took it up to the top of the Eiffel Tower, and his uh, prediction was that he would actually measure um, a, a loss of charge. You, I mean, uh, if you could if you could measure how much charge there is at the ground level, you would see a decrease as you go up. When he went up, it was 300 meters, was not that high. His results were not conclusive. He did not see a drop as much as he expected to see. Um, you would actually expect to see about half of the charge, um, 80 meters high. His results were not conclusive. He saw significant radiation at the top of the tower. So he didn't, uh, he came away noting that there must be some kind of cosmic radiation coming from outer space. But he wasn't be able to prove it conclusively. Then came Victor Hess in 1912, and he made some, so he, he was an Austrian American scientist. He actually came back, he came to the US, and he was teaching at Fordham University for a while. So he made a couple of very decisive, he actually made a series of six experiments, and what he did was he basically took, you know, he built a, built a balloon. I mean, he had a little carriage here. And his final experiment was him and two other, uh, two, two other partners, two other students, I think, with him. You can see in those days, there were no seat belts. There was no, uh, no, no uh, permission from parents. You know, he just went up in a balloon 17,000 feet um, high. But he did that in his last, last experiment. He actually came down in a farmland, and the farmer drove him to the nearest train station you know, in the middle of uh, Germany, and he took the train to Berlin. And then he wrote up about it. And you can see his measurement was really nice because now this was very decisive because if you look at this plot this measures the number of ions which is the, the amount of charge per cubic centimeter per second so it's a amount of charge in some volume unit per second so it's a flux so he could quantify that and uh, as a function of altitude in kilometers and you can see that at five kilometers uh, the charge is about 50 percent of what you see at sea level 
okay, at, at higher, okay, so you can see that it's going up, it goes twice, uh, sorry, it just worked twice at sea level. So this is pretty clear, so, you know, this is uh, all the way up to eight kilometers, there's a significant increase in charge. Clearly the radiation was coming from outer space. Okay, so this, this, this was very decisive and this is what motivated scientists and astrophysicists, physicists worldwide. This really got to them, this is where is this radiation coming from? We want to know what this is and, and how do you, you know, how, what's going on? And this, you know, the public got very engaged in this. This was in the 1912, 1932, in the about 20 years uh, span, people got very excited and, and actually got uh, in the New York Times, uh, Millikan, who was a scientist, he was a physicist. He was the, I mean, when I was preparing this talk, I was surprised to find that he was actually the first recipient, first PhD from Columbia University. I didn't know that. I mean, maybe that's true, maybe that's not true. But he, he went on to become a faculty at, uh, at, in California. Uh, you can see this is being borne out and played out in uh, New York Times. Millikan scientists hotly retorts, retorts hotly to Compton in Cosmic Ray Clash. Millikan strongly thought that these were some kind of very penetrating radiation coming from outer space. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't know conclusively that these were charged particles. And here's a quote that I found. This was in January 1932 issue of Modern Mechanics. This was a mechanics popular science kind of magazine which said, neither stars nor worlds, sunlight or heaven, can science admit to eternal. Only one thing known to science can be called immortal, cosmic rays investigated among others by famous California physicist R.A. Millikan. These rays may even be relics of days before there existed any universe as we know it. So, you know, very, very, people were very excited about this. So a lot of research happened um, in the meantime, okay? And then on the evening of October 15th, 1991, okay, a detector in Dugway Proving Ground in Utah detected the highest energy event